Wrong thinking produces inharmony in our body, which in turn produces sickness. Our bodies sometimes are instantly reharmonized while in the silence. In the silence, our minds become passive, open, free, and loving, at which time the infinite master of harmony touches the mental chords of our being and we are well. Just as the piano can be tuned, so can the mind. Man's body is made up of 12 octaves the same as in music. All matter is music. All matter is composed of 12 octaves. Wrong thinking produces inharmony in some of the octaves in our body. Right thinking tunes these organs, puts them back into their normal condition. Boys have their little steel magnets by which they pick up small pieces of steel, pins, and so forth. When overworked, these magnets no longer attract. Then the boys take their magnets, have them rubbed against strong magnets or remagnetized with an electric current, and their power is quickly restored. So with our bodies. Mind is the re-electrifier and re-harmonizer of the octaves into all harmony. Right thinking, therefore, is the most important thing in life. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Just as a tuning fork near a piano will respond with a vibration when a key of the same pitch is struck on the piano nearby, so likewise do the bodies of men respond to proper stimulus and become in tune. By right thinking, man can reharmonize himself, can achieve health, success, and prosperity. To enter the silence, one must first establish perfect relaxation in mind and body. Then, as the consciousness is brought from one part of the body to another, the tuning takes place. If the leader in the silence should be intoning, there will be many in the audience who will feel tinkling sensations, vibrations, and are often instantly healed. They have been instantly reharmonized. Sometimes it may take several intonings in the silence for a complete healing. Should you have a violent vibration, feel no fear, but thank God for your healing because the more violent the vibration, Perhaps the worse has been your condition, and the more surely has the reharmony begun. Some people will feel this vibration for hours, even days, throughout which there is always healing. Others may not feel the vibration at all. Yet if there has been any inharmony in the bodily organs, these organs are unconscious to the conscious intoning reharmonization. Many people who have been healed of divers and many malignant diseases were at no time conscious of any vibration. Never be discouraged if you feel no sensation. If you do feel a vibration, know that you are susceptible and on the high road to a healing demonstration. The one intoning may or may not be feeling vibrations. Religion is the life of God in the soul of man. The silence is the medium by which the life of God and the soul of man are brought into at one mint. The silence is a medium by which man comes in a closer touch with the infinite a medium by which man becomes conscious of his nearness to the infinite. The silence is the meeting place where man's spirit links with God's spirit, where spirit meets spirit and the marvel of his grace never ceases. The silence is another way of praying, which is another way of concentration. It is another way of visualization. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. In the silence, a man can by his thoughts change his life his conditions, his environment, his all. By right thinking, man becomes harmonious. A harmonious man, in tune with the infinite, is on the king's highway to health, success, abundance, prosperity, happiness, love, and peace. By means of wrong thinking, our minds are put out of harmony with the great infinite spirit of God. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. When wrong thinking becomes right thinking, the man's right relationship to God is restored. He becomes an open channel for the influx of the Spirit, so that whatever demonstration he may desire, he may have. In the silence, a man may change his thinking as in no other way, therefore may change his heart, change his whole being, change his environment, change every condition to which he was subject. The human body may be likened to a harp. When man thinks rightly, his body is in tune, but wrong thinking creates inharmony in the body and produces sickness. Wrong thinking produces inharmony in the mind, which, of course, disconnects man from rightful association with the divine. A man must, therefore, think right. Yet, because of centuries of erroneous conception of God and of the world, man has been a negative instead of a positive being, and his unwisdom has reacted upon the present generation. We are mental sending and receiving stations. 
what we receive depends upon how we are thinking now. For success, health, and happiness, we must, in the silent chambers of the soul, change our thinking if we are holding negative or inharmonious thoughts. In the silence, there is presented to man his greatest opportunity to change his thinking. Wrong thinking produces inharmony of the body, which in turn produces sickness. If we change to right thinking, we have health, success, and happiness. Therefore, the silence, when properly used, reharmonizes our bodies and minds through the simple agency of right thinking. There are steps of approach to the silence. Stillness is one thing, and the silence is another. One may quiet himself physically and not be still, and he may be still without entering the silence. When one becomes physically and mentally at rest, he is apt to become receptive to psychic influences. And when these are not desired, it is advisable to protect oneself while mentally negative. One may affirm his oneness with God, his being surrounded and protected by the divine goodness, and may symbolize this by enveloping himself in thought with the white light of love or the mellow tints of sunshine. With the senses calmed and unresponsive to the slower vibrations, but responsive to the quicker ones, a peace and calm pervade one's mind, and it becomes consciously receptive to higher vibrations of vital energy. Immune from the lesser harmonies, one opens himself to the greater ones, which are always seeking avenues of expression. With the greater influx of the one life, a sense of power steals over one and he becomes conscious of increased vigor and vitality. In relinquishing specific thoughts, one opens inwardly rather than outwardly and becomes receptive to subconscious impressions that are directed by his conscious affirmation of fundamental truth. The subconscious responds by returning to the conscious the logical sequences of the truths that have been consciously impressed upon it. The subconscious follows the lead given to it by the conscious affirmations of truth, and it brings back the consciousness of those truths in their various ramifications. <laughs>